Tomorrow, we've got a ranked play reveal. Tuesday, we've likely got a battle pass and full season two trailer. And Wednesday, Ashika Island and Resurgence are introduced to Warzone 2.0 with season two's launch. So ahead of that, today, I wanted to take some time to break down everything you need to know about Resurgence in the upcoming season two experience. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you going to be jumping into Ashika Island and grinding out your faster paced gameplay? Or are you going to be hanging back and playing something else either in or outside of Call of Duty come Wednesday? Drop your thoughts below. But for now, let's take a look at everything you need to know about Ashika Island and Resurgence. So first and foremost, when can you actually jump into this? When does this launch? That would be February 15th, this upcoming Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We usually see things around 10 a.m. Pacific time, but for this seasonal launch, it's about an hour earlier than we're normally used to with a lot of global launches. On screen, we'll have a handy converter graphic that should show you just about everything you need to know in regards to where you are at in your own time zone. So you can see that conversion for yourself. But as for a little bit further, preloads as of recording this full transparency, I'm checked out as of this being published, got ahead on content, took the weekend off away from the desk, got to chill for the Super Bowl and stuff like that. So if that information has since become available, apologies, but as of recording this, no information has been given just yet for preloads. Historically, it's about 24 hours before the update's publication and when we see those available, sometimes only for PlayStation, sometimes only for console, sometimes for all platforms. But bear in mind, that's probably closer to the season two launch. Next up, the world, the new map and play space. Shared with DMZ, Ashika Island is going to be home to our new Warzone excursions, home to points of interest like Port Ashika, Suki Castle, Shipwreck, Residential, Ogoniku Farms, Town Center, and Beach Club, among many other smaller unnamed locations. You'll be able to explore, loot up as you go, as you would be able to with any Resurgence map, but a more condensed map means more engagement, especially with Resurgence mechanics in play. Now, while details aren't necessarily given just yet, the assumption is that this is going to be relatively in line with prior Resurgence maps in terms of sizing. Rebirth Island, Fortune's Keep, similar to those. But being that this was created by High Moon Studios, who made Fortune's Keep, it's not too risky of a bet to consider that that's relatively the same size, a decent comparison here at that. So let's dive into the resurgence aspect of all of this. For a lot of people, I'm sure this is just a refresher, but for some who may be new, here's what makes Ashika Island and the gameplay experience different from traditional BR that you'd find on Almazra or previously Caldera and the two iterations of Verdansk. Firstly, resurgence-based game modes have different rule sets. The biggest one being that you can respawn. Whereas in traditional Battle Royale, if you died, you'd have to go to the Gulag and fight for your life to come back. This mode, there is no Gulag. You simply redeploy, or so long as one of your teammates is alive. There's a timer that gets reduced with actions in-game. So things as simple as opening supply boxes and buying items from buy stations, all the way to things like downing players and getting full kills, those will take certain amounts of time off that timer. This adds to the overall pace of the game because once a player is eliminated, they very well may not be eliminated for too long. So if you're looting their dead body, watch your back. If you take too long, they could be dropping in to try and get some revenge. But also, as the zone closes, the smaller the zone, the more players still alive, so a threat could be around any corner. Another additional thing that makes Resurgence unique in its own right is that kills grant enemy intel. This is something that was a staple of Resurgence, but we didn't have it confirmed until a few days ago, actually. But if you kill an enemy, just like Rebirth and Fortune's Keep, you'll get pings on where their squad is for a few moments following that kill, giving you the heads up on where their swift revenge may be coming from. Additionally, we have a new feature this time around with Ashika Island called Restore Honor, where once per match, operators who fall on Ashika Island will drop a dog tag at the location of their death. If you or one of your squad mates picks up that dog tag, you'll be rewarded with a small cash reward and a UAV ping to scan the area for supplies and potentially the position of enemy operators, maybe even those that downed you. So kind of like confirming or denying a kill, but getting a little bit more bonus out of it in terms of a UAV sweeping ping, as well as some cash. Resurgence also features things like Resurgence crates, which once looted will, after a certain amount of time, relock and then offer up new loot that you can loot once again. Same thing goes for the restock event. We'll see that here more commonly throughout Resurgence modes as well. Within Ashika Island, not necessarily at launch, but in season at some point, redeploy drones are going to be available first and only for a little bit on Ashika Island. That'll come to Almazra a little later on down the line, but for the initial introduction, that's going to be something that helps the pace of play on Ashika Island and within Resurgence quite a bit. Now, while all this kind of stuff sounds pretty good here in regards to the pacing of play, getting in the action a lot more, unfortunately, one of the things that many people didn't quite enjoy in the Battle Royale experience from Almazra is carrying over into Ashika Island. 
AI are going to be on Ashika Island. Plus, there's a new version called the Rusher. Now, the Rusher isn't necessarily so much armored. He's an easier takedown, but they're faster and more agile and will run at you with a sword as well as a pistol. So that's something to be on the lookout here for those so that you don't get snuck up on and then attacked by an AI. Now, the final thing here in regards to resurgence overall is the player count. Right now, that is not specified, but if we're going anywhere around what we saw with Rebirth as well as Fortune's Keep, it'll probably be around that 50 player mark. And like what we saw with Rebirth and Fortune's Keep, as well as what we see with Almazra, that highest number, that sort of cap on what you'll see with the players is likely squad size specific to whatever game mode you're playing. So it could be something different for solos versus quads, just simply because you're dealing with multiples of four rather than individual players. Now, that's about the basics here that you'll need to know in regards to the Resurgence game mode and Ashika Island's gameplay itself. But one of the big things overall that you have to consider is there's going to be a large variance in gameplay. There's going to be many differences in terms of what you can do and what you experience on Ashika Island and the smaller resurgence map versus what you'd say experience in Almazra and the larger maps. I'd wager that you're going to see a lot more SMG play, primarily SMG rifle play, because you'll want things in snappier nature to gunfights. You won't have to prioritize things like damage range, long range recoil control, and other factors as much since your ranges will be much more manageable, be much smaller intervals in distance from you to an enemy. And so therefore, because you don't have to prioritize those things, damage range, long range recoil control, that stuff usually takes away from things like sprint to fire speed, ADS speed. So when you don't have to focus on those so much, you can then kit your weapons out to be faster to ADS faster to sprint to fire. So therefore, it's just snappier gameplay. And that's usually what you'll end up seeing. That was the big difference here in regards to when Verdansk and Caldera were the main big maps versus Rebirth and Fortune's Keep. You'd see a lot of that difference here. Now, of course, you very well may still see the LMG meta come into play at some point. You may see whatever is still the main meta weapons after the Season 2 weapon tuning in play with Ashika Island. But it is something that I think you'll see a lot more weapons be viable, if not outright more competitive in those closer quarter engagements that the map will inherently offer up. But perhaps one of the biggest things here to remember and what we'll leave you with is a disclaimer here for this if you are someone that absolutely loved Rebirth and Fortune's Keep and the resurgence modes of Warzone 1. Warzone 1 was an entirely different beast. One of the big things that made Resurgence so popular in Warzone 1 was a lot of the outplay mechanics, stimming your way out of an engagement, slide canceling, breaking the ankles of your opponents. Those things unfortunately do not carry over here into Warzone 2.0. A lot of those things fundamentally have been patched up at a base level that you aren't really able to do that. So in regards to the overall gameplay experience, it is something that will still offer up much more faster gameplay, much more engagements in a given time frame, given that the matches are usually about half the time of a regular standard battle royale match so you'll get more engagements in that smaller window of time but overall it is going to be a very different experience compared to what we had with rebirth island and fortune's keep the thing that i keep coming back to and while we will not know until we actually jump into it the thing that i'm kind of thinking it's going to be like is day one to like week one of rebirth island back in december of 2020 when rebirth island and resurgence was first introduced to the Warzone experience that was something that players at that point really didn't have movement down pat they didn't have it as a second nature thing where you'd see all these crazy outplay maneuvers instead it was just a regular faster paced version of Battle Royale on Verdansk at that point. I kind of think that's where we're going to be here with Ashika Island. We won't have those movement mechanics and everything to go along with it, but it is still something that can be a lot of fun and a lot faster paced than we have with Almazra. So for that, that's where I'm going to leave you, as that's just about everything you really need to know about Ashika Island and Resurgence here upcoming within Season 2 and the launch on Wednesday and beyond. We'll of course keep you up to date with absolutely any and everything you need to know. Tips, tricks, best class setups, everything going forward here with us. I'm excited to see what we can do with Resurgence and Ashika Island. But before we wrap everything up, do me a favor, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. As we've talked about the last week or so, I apologize. It's probably getting pretty annoying to hear the same pitch every single day, but just want to make sure the information is out there if you're at all interested in checking out Gamer Advantage, getting the best blue light glasses on the market. Right now is as best a time as any, because in addition to Gamer Advantage offering the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market with lenses that are clinically proven, they're also offering a 14% off site-wide discount on some frames, but Code Espresso stacks on top of that to give you 24% off your entire order. The best deal that we've seen since the holidays and likely will see for quite some time. We don't see these big of discounts come around very often. So if you guys are at all interested, you'd like to learn more or at least check out the science of it, links in the description below. But if you want to pick something up, Code Espresso gets you the best savings possible. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to season two? Are you guys looking forward to Ashika Island and Resurgence? Or the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoy the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor, 
favor and drop a like on it. And if new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modern Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.